Tilt rotor aircraft can take off and land like helicopters, but fly as fast as airplanes. This offers a dual advantage, and while this gives them incredible versatility, it is not without risks. So what's behind the military's growing reliance on these hybrid aircraft? Let's take a look at why the military is swapping out some good old traditional aircraft for these transformer-like machines. While tilt rotor aircraft like the V-22 Osprey are incredibly useful for their versatility, there are a couple of challenges that all tilt rotor aircraft face when it comes to safety. The first is asymmetric thrust. Unlike a helicopter, tilt rotors have two large propellers which are spaced widely apart. This is to allow the engines to pivot and translate from hovering or vertical flight like a helicopter to horizontal thrust which allows it to fly like an airplane. The problem arises when one engine fails or stops producing sufficient power. There is now a situation where much more thrust is coming from one side. And as a result, the aircraft wants to roll towards the weaker side, which is not producing as much thrust. As you can imagine, this is not good and could lead to a hard landing or even a crash. The second challenge is vortex ring state. This aerodynamic condition occurs when an aircraft descends too quickly in a hover or near hover state. This causes the rotors to recirculate their own downwash. Also known as settling with power, helicopters can also experience this phenomenon, and it can lead to a crash if not corrected in time. The way to recover is to increase forward speed to escape the turbulent air. A tilt rotor aircraft's dual rotors can make recovery from a vortex ring state more complicated than for conventional helicopters. Now that we have a better grasp of some of the challenges faced by tilt rotor aircraft, let's take a look at two iconic aircraft that are being replaced by these hybrid machines. One is fixed wing and the other rotary wing. Coming up first is the C-2 Greyhound. A beloved aircraft by Navy personnel, the Greyhound performs one important and often morale-boosting duty Carrier Onboard Delivery or COD. This is the delivery of personnel, supplies, engine parts, and most importantly, mail, even Amazon packages. This aircraft is like the FedEx for the Navy. The venerable fixed wing Greyhound has been performing COD duty since 1965, and itself is a derivative of the world famous E2 Hawkeye. Take a Hawkeye, remove the radar dome, widen the fuselage, and you've got yourself a C2 Greyhound. The C-2 can carry up to 26 passengers, 10,000 pounds of cargo, or a combination of both, up to 1,300 nautical miles. However, nothing lasts forever, and the C-2 has been slated to be replaced by the CMV-22B, which itself is a derivative of the V-22 Osprey. The most noticeable difference between the V-22 and the CMV-22 are the enlarged fuel tanks on the side of the fuselage. The CMV-22 can carry up to 24 passengers or 6,000 pounds of cargo, both figures that are lower than the C-2. So why did the Navy replace the C-2 with the CMV-22? One reason is the CMV-22's vertical takeoff capability. The Osprey can be shore-based, land-based, or expeditionary-based. Basically, the CMV-22 can operate out of more locations aside from a traditional runway or even carrier deck. Another benefit of the Osprey over the Greyhound, vertical landings are much smoother for patients receiving medical treatment as compared to arrested wire landings that the C-2 performs. The sudden stop made during landings by fixed wing aircraft on carriers is jarring even for a healthy individual, let alone someone who needs urgent care. This also comes in handy during disaster relief operations, as there may not be working airfields near an area which has been hit by a hurricane or other natural disaster. Additionally, the CMV-22 can refuel in the air, something the C-2 cannot do. This aerial refueling greatly extends the range and on-station time of the Osprey as compared to the Greyhound. The combination of being able to land almost anywhere and refuel in flight has been called a game changer by some in the Navy. What you also may not realize is that the CMV-22 can act as an airborne command and control node. If a carrier's E-2 Hawkeye is not available for any reason, the Navy's newest Osprey can fill some of the Hawkeye's roles in the form of advanced networking 
and data fusion for a carrier strike group and its aircraft. But how would it do this? The most likely scenario would involve some kind of roll-on, roll-off comms package that would be placed inside the CMV-22's cargo bay. Modern military radios with software-defined features now exist in small packages that deliver very robust comms and data sharing capabilities. This is another feather in the CMV-22's cap. Brace yourselves. The next aircraft to be replaced by a tilt rotor is another beloved, even iconic, aircraft. The helicopter known as the UH-60 Blackhawk. The UH-60 first flew in 1974 and entered service in 1981. The latest version of the Blackhawk is the UH-60M, which has a crew of two and carries 11 combat troops at a speed of about 150 knots with a range of just over 300 miles. While a proven and reliable aircraft, the design has been basically maxed out to this point. The Army has been looking for a faster and longer range replacement, and you guessed it, it's going to be a tilt rotor. Meet the Bell V-280 Valor, known formally as the Future Long Range Assault Aircraft or FLRAA, the V-280 will enter service in the 2030s. The Valor is smaller than the V-22 Osprey, features a V-tail design, and rotates only the forward third of its engine nacelle to position the rotors. This was done to reduce maintenance costs as the engine stays in place while the tilt rotor mechanisms are the only ones that move. With a combat range of 800 miles, it more than doubles the Blackhawk's range. The top speed of the V-280 is estimated to be in excess of 300 knots, which is twice as fast as the UH-60. Lastly, the V-280 will be able to carry 14 passengers which is three more than the Black Hawk. The Army has been operating utility helicopters since the Korean War, so it will be interesting to see a hybrid aircraft in the form of the Valor taking on this role. Despite the inherent challenges faced by tilt rotors, the ability to land almost anywhere like a helicopter and fly with the speed and range of a fixed-wing aircraft is without a doubt the main draw to these hybrid machines. There's a saying that generals are usually planning to fight the last war, but in the case of tilt rotors, but in the case of these tilt rotors with their longer ranges and higher speeds, it appears that military planners are assembling the pieces for what could be a conflict in the Western Pacific. The Pacific theater is vast where hundreds of miles is just a trip around the corner. Having tactical logistical aircraft that can operate almost anywhere with better ranges than previous platforms could be a game changer. After all, logistics wins wars. So far, tilt rotors are not set to replace attack helicopters. If you'd like to learn more about arguably the best attack helicopter there is, then check out this video on the Apache. Now you know.